Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. According to the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, 3 million Nigerians lost 18 billion naira to Ponza scheme operators as other illegal investment schemes have cost Nigerians their asset and life savings. Also, the Central Bank of Nigeria revealed that between 2016 and 2017, 12 billion naira was lost by investors. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Deficit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, has advised Nigerians to beware of Ponzi scheme operating under the guise of financial institution, as such financial institutions were fraudulent. According to the corporation, they have intensified awareness campaign across the nation, warning the people against scammers operating in the guise of Ponzi scheme. There are a lot of Ponzi schemes across the country, especially in local places. This is what the corporation is quoted to say. And people in these places may not be aware of the scheme because they entice people with high interest rate. They trick people into putting money in their fraudulent financial institutions. And the people are not aware that they are illegal. And that's why the NDIC is passing the message to everyone on the need to look out for financial institutions that have corporation certification to operate. We have a financial expert joining the conversation this morning, Bola Olujide. Uh, he's an executive director of DMA Advisory and Management Services Limited in Lagos right here. Thank you for joining us, Bola. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, so um, I'd like to share your thoughts on this. We know that with all of the, you know, warning and advice that's been put out by different stakeholders, regulators, uh, Niger and uh, Nigerians seem to be falling, you know, every other day. You know, you have the, the rate of Ponzi scheme on the high. And every other time, it feels like nobody's listening. Do you think that, you know, the stakeholders are doing enough, uh, uh, well, um, the, 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 the stakeholder can do a bit more. Um, maybe try to send out the messages through the uh, uh, channel that the target audience would need to. So, if, if, if I want to pass a message, I know that there are people listening to their religious leaders. I want to be able to reach them to the religious leader. There are people who are listening to their traditional leaders. I want to pass the message to them to their traditional leaders. But how many Nigerians listen to NDIT when NDIT speaks to them? And I think that is where they disconnect. OK. All right. Um, <laughs> that's a very interesting question you've asked. How many Nigerians listen to NDIC when NDIC speaks to them? Uh, well, I, I, I mean, I, I, as a media person, you know, I, you know I, I, I've had opportunity to host several conversations, several, um, psh, oh, uh, about these, of these guys who come out to say, give us your money. I mean, on radio, I had MMM. When they started, they came and they said, you give us your money, you're going to get X, Y, Z percent, which sounded too good to be true. Went on the internet, saw there was some history, asked him some questions, they denied everything and said it was not the same MMM that was in Russia. I said, oh, but um, you see, it's on the internet. The people here have been, have been put in prison in Russia. What's going on here? And they said it wasn't the same. The information was there. The, the history was there. But people still put money in MMM. What's going on? Why? Why do people ignore these warning signs and still put money in things like that? You, you actually one of the few people who bothers to check online. Um, because a lot of time when you check, you find some of this information there. As a matter of fact, there are some early schemes that by the time they have already started going down and people were reporting online, there were still new people who were getting onto the same scam. So it means that those information are not getting to the right channel. We need to be able to get information through the correct channel to the target audience. Otherwise, these guys will continue to exploit uh, the, the greed and ignorance of the people. If it is too uh, uh, if it's too good to be true, it is probably not true. Hmm. 
Mm. But, but, but let's also look at, you know, um, another development by the Securities and Exchange Commission with the fact that they recently developed a framework, you know, to provide some level of regulation for the digital space and all of that. Do you think that this is making any um, heads way? Is, is it making any effort in curbing the activities of this Ponzi operators or Ponzi scheme or financial institutions that are not legal, yeah. however you put it? It, it, it will affect some of them, and I, I dare to say a few of them. Most of the investment that are being made with Ponzi scheme are not even being done via anything that has to do with the internet. They are being done through trusted people. My friend has come to me, he said, I have invested in this, and I got this. So I'm going to invest based on what my friend said, based on what my colleague said, based on what my church or my mosque or other people that I listen to, based on what they said, not necessarily based on what is um, the, in the digital space. So, uh, while people who consume a lot of digital information might be dissuaded or they might be confused what check uh, up to date information on what is going on, Seven other prospective consumers of a Ponzi scheme uh, product will not check those things out. They, they, don't, they don't care about sex. They just care about someone they know who has said that it is working. Hmm. All right. Uh, uh, we, we've seen, the, you know, the authorities uh, come out to say, to say, hey, guys, you know, Nigerians need to be uh, to be aware of, of, of what, what's going on. But also that there should be some sort of um, questions should be asked. For instance, you have the CBN uh, uh, regulating, uh, you know, uh, investment and you have the uh, S Securities and Exchange Commission as well. Um, but it's a bit confusing for, for a lot of people. So can you help us, help us, you know, with what people should look out for? Which, who are those regulated by the SEC? Who are those regulated by um, the CBN? Okay. Yes. Is it, is it just enough to say, oh, uh, do you have a CAC registration? Like we used to ask them sometimes, oh, you know, come to the series, oh, are you registered? You know, so what, what documentation should people be asking for? I mean, you see companies apart from mm -hmm. MMM, we're hearing of the likes of uh, Ultimate Cycler, Zafon, Give Us Forum, iCharity, uh, uh, Crowd Rising, Get Help Worldwide, remember that one, Cash Doubler, remember that one, Apex Forum, Reject Cash, Donor B, Zoga Funds, and so on. It was one that happened recently, Ink Nation, you know, and Ink Coin. People even lost their lives. So what should people look out for? Um, well, you, you've listed quite a name. One of the recent reports that I read on at the point in time, we had over 160 of them. So you can't even go to the list of what they did in that. Uh, now, there are several sides to this. If anybody is collecting money from the public, they must have a CBN approval. So there has to be a CBN registration. And anybody that is registered with CBN, you can check it out with the CBN. If anybody is collecting investment, if you are in the investment space, you must have a check approval for that investment space. For financial institutions, there's a further requirement for insurance, and that is with NDAC. So if an organization calls itself a financial institution, you expect to see the NDIC logo, or that it won't be registered with NDIC, and that can not be checked out with NDIC. Hmm. So, so, but if... So, okay, go ahead. Yeah, so people who, who want to check this thing out, who actually go to the website of this institution, or ask, ask those people you want to invest with for their CBN approval, you have a CBN license, you have a tech license, and I see a copy of their tech license, or, or, or you look for their NDI. So things like that might happen, but between you and them, the average investor in those schemes um, will, not, will not do that. Mm. But, but let's still come back, you know, to the regulators, uh, because as much as we expect, expect that, you know, it's a two-way thing, the people are responsible, uh, you know, for 
uh, fighting this or resisting all of this, the regulators are also responsible. And so if we say that some of this Ponzi scheme or all of this Ponzi scheme would get to a point where um, you know, they have the CAC registration, is it not um, enough for uh, the regulators second CBN to weave out, at this point in time, you know, to weave out this person's, you know, from the space before they get to the people? Okay, so we seem to have lost connection with uh, Bon Lao. Uh, as soon as we're able to establish that connection, we we'll definitely have him back. But the concern here is, um, if we say that these persons are not licensed, of course, they're illegal financial institutions. I mean, you have a lot of these schemes that are out there. But at the end of the day, the reason why it's a Ponzi scheme, it's because uh, they have gone you know, a different way entirely. And uh, you have the regulators saying, hey, they're not licensed. For instance, they don't have the license from the Central Bank of Nigeria. They don't have the license from, you know, SEC, uh, the Security and Exchange Commission. So, but right. they have I'm some kind have, of... I'm told we have Bolaho back. Bolaho, are you there, please? I, I, I cannot hear. Okay. The, the audio is lost. Okay. Can you hear us now, Bolaho? Can you hear the us audio now? It's lost. Okay, it seems Bolao can't hear us. Uh, Bolao, if you can hear me, kindly confirm. Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you now. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Well, uh, you were making a point before we, we lost the connection, so please uh, uh, proceed and, and just, just complete what you were saying. Um, I can't even remember. Okay, all right. So, let, so, let, let, let's move on. I, I have a question for you, uh, which, you know, you've talked about the CBN, you've talked about you know, the Securities and Exchange Commission, what I understand from what you said is that for those who are um, taking loans, uh, who are or what are giving loans, you know, you have to look at is the CBN approved them to, to, to be giving out, issuing loans. And for those who are, uh, you know, uh, investment platforms where you can go and then put your money in and after some months you get your money out with uh, uh, interest, you saying they should look out for SEC uh, 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 certification. You also talked about NDIC, which is the agency we are looking at. But I want to point you to a particular uh, company because I have noticed some of these companies have these SEC approval. Um, I've even been to events where you have these SEC officials come out. But but you look at the the companies. Maybe they are forced to reduce their interest, you know, you know, to a reasonable extent. Some will say because of pressures from the bank. There's one company in question who had them. Um, uh, such approval, Adi Finance, I don't know if you heard of Adi Finance, they recently crashed and um, depositors' funds, investments to the tune of billions of Naira was lost. But Adi Finance in 2021 was able to secure a SEC license from the Security and Exchange Commission, but they crashed. Okay. Um, institutions that are licensed can still crash if the operations is not being properly run. And that is where the role of the regulator comes in. If an institution is not registered at all, it's not even within the purview of, of, of the uh, regulator. But once it is registered, the regulator has an obligation as a watchdog on the activities of that institution. He gets periodic report of what is going on in that institution. And where things are not going right, he's able to step in and turn this, the, 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 the storm and make sure that it doesn't go down. If it should go down, where you have an institution that is, uh, uh, you know, also under NDI, if it goes down, NDIC will have ensured that a certain portion of uh, whatever it has, for, for, you know, uh, collected people, uh, will be will reimbursed back to the individual deposit. So, the, the case you point at is, is, is regulatory failure. Okay, regulatory failure. Well, so, um, you know, the question is, with the CAC registration, is it not possible to still, you know, fish out some of those illegal uh, institutions that are, you know, uh, defrauding the people? Of course. Uh, people, people have been doing that. People sue them. But what we have also seen over the years is that uh, the guy who actually ran this institution, when things go bust, they disappear. Some of them 
up to today, some of the ones that have gone bust even two, three years ago, husband and wife have disappeared and nobody has found their doctor now. So we have no situation. But those that remain around, of course, they will be sued and, and dragged to the court to recover and remove their asset to be disposed of when you get the judgment to be able to repay uh, uh, what has happened. Hmm. There are a lot of cases in, in point. You talked about the husband and wife. You know, they were popular online. You know, it were big in Lagos here. You have the lady, the young girl on Facebook, who was, um, I think she was selling the tomatoes or rice or beans or something like that. It was an agriculture yeah. uh, connected. Uh, and then the girl, young girl, um, uh, you know, people's money has just gone down the drain. The young boy from Aqu in Aquaibum State who also, you know, 20-something-year-old boy, I don't even think he's up to 25, you know, run away people's money. Um, uh, it, it's, it's tough if you have a SEC uh, 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 approval or CBN approval and then people still need to, what, I mean, what can people do? Because if you have the SEC approval like we've seen with ADFX, who were offering uh, double digit interest month on a monthly basis, that's what they were giving, double digit interest on a monthly basis, then maybe because of SEC pressure, they had to take it down a bit, but it was still high on a monthly basis. So if people see, okay, you have SEC, NDIC or CBN you know, uh, uh, approval, then what are they, how are they going to know whether it's going to go up or go down? I mean, what other things can, should people use maybe intuition or what, will you say, finally? It, it shouldn't be intuition. Like I said, in those kind of situations, the regulator has failed. And Nigerians must drag or hold the regulator responsible. When an institution that is licensed by a regulator is producing returns that are unrealistic, that regulator has an obligation to ask questions, to request. If you are collecting this money from the public and you say you are investing it in this program, uh, does that product have the capacity to generate the kind of return they are promising? And if it is not, then will you withdraw your license? You cannot allow that kind of an institution to remain afloat and be collecting money from the public. You withdraw your license. And some of these returns are obnoxious in actual. All right. All if right. I am a regulator and I've given someone a license and he said, I will pay you 30% every month. Uh, if you bring your money to me, 30 times 12 is it's, it's about 360 uh, 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 per annum. What can, even if you are doing okay, how are you going to get that kind of <laughs> So if you have my license, I have an obligation to investigate what you're investing in. And if it doesn't make sense, I will draw that license. All right, we have to go. We have to go. So you're saying the regulators as well cannot uh, absolve themselves of uh, complicity uh, or neglect, and the uh, you know, public can sue them as well um, for loss of funds. Absolutely. Yes, all right. One, well, thank you very much for your time. Bolaho Olojere, a financial expert. It's been a thrill having you on the program tonight. Hopefully next time we'll have you in the studio. Sure. All right. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for being with us, and that's the size of our show this morning. We we'll appreciate you. Thank you for uh, starting with us. Seven o'clock up until now. We'll return tomorrow at the uh, same time. It's been great having you back, Mercy. Have you yeah, lost money you. in any of these schemes? Let me know. Just yes or no, quickly, quickly. No, I, no, no, really. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. No, to be very honest, that's not I, how I don't money believe works you. for me. I mean, the way I believe. I, I don't. I, to be very honest, yes, I believe that if 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 I have you haven't lost money, money in any of these schemes. I haven't. All right, all right. I believe you pay me. I have lost money. I have lost money. My name is Kofi Bartels. My name is Messi Bopo. We'll return tomorrow. Good morning. Well, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Have a great day. I am Messi Bobo.